So we're looking at uh, square roots and these irrational number things. And for those, um, what do I want to say? That when we have this radical sign, because we've been talking about that radical sign, it's only going to give the positive answer. Uh, so I'm going to say this equals a radical sign. So it gives, they'll call it the principal root. Um, this is, so principal slash the positive square root. And when we looked at these before, so when we were looking at these, we said square root of 16 is? Eight. Four. No, eight. Four. four. Because 4 squared, or 4 times 4, equals 16. Yes? Yes. So for square root, a square root is saying what number times itself, what number squared equals the number that's inside that radical sign sort of thing. So this right here, I'm going to say, just always gives the positive answer. That if you were to take and punch that into your calculator, it's always going to give you the positive answer. Good. If you have a positive number times a positive number, you're going to get what type of answer? Always. Positive. positive, right? Do you agree? Any positive times any positive is going to give you a positive answer. So when we have a radical sign, inside the radical, so I'm going to try to write under here, so positive number only, that if you were to do a square root of a number, that number you're doing the square root of must be positive. Because the only way you can get a number times itself is going to have a positive thing there. And I'm going to say maybe because a positive squared equals a positive. And if you were to do a negative number times itself, your answer is going to be positive. positive. So if you have a negative number squared, negative 2 times negative 2 gives you a 4. Negative 3 times negative 3 gives you nine. positive 9. Yep. Um, so for those, we're always going to have like positive answers. So a negative number squared equals a positive. Now some calculators, if you type in like negative 2 squared, sometimes they'll actually give you a negative 4. But we all know in our heads that the calculator is just kind of doing it stupid, right? Negative 2 times negative 2 is? A positive 4. Um, if we want the negative square root, it doesn't show up insanely well in my little typed thing, so I'm just going to rewrite it right here. But if yours looks OK on yours, but this is supposed to be like negative and then a square root sign is what that symbol is supposed to be. Um, so that right there is um, a negative square root. So a negative square root. So if we were to have this next example, negative square root of 16, that has to equal negative 4. Because this right here is going to give me a 4, agreed? And we have that negative in front of it. So the answer is just going to be this negative 4. So that's the way that they will get the, the what do I want to try to say? Let me erase that. That's how they'll get like that negative square root. So this here always give a positive answer. And if you wrote, wrote it the way I did at first, you can leave it if you want to. But this thing here makes it negative. So it seems kind of weird, all this like blah, blah, blah. But you feel like you're getting it OK, even though you maybe not see the whole point yet. Why? So have you guys ever seen a plus or minus symbol like this thing here? That'll show up a little bit later in the quadratic formula. What they're really trying to say is the square root of 16, and it could be positive or negative. You could do one of the two. So we know square root of 16 is 4. So then we'll have this like plus or minus in front of it. Eve, do you want to see where you're going, even though there's no reason for you to remember it? Okay, so feel free to totally ignore this. This is just for bonus points. But if, if, if you get it all confused, don't even worry about it. Eventually, we're going to be going here. x squared equals 25. What do we know the answer could be for x? x could be? Five. So x could be 5, right? Or x could be 
Negative 5. Because you agree negative 5 times negative 5, negative 5 squared also gives you the positive 25? Yeah. Now, if we go through and try to solve one of these, and you won't have to do that right now because this comes up in later math, but if you wanted to solve this, we'd say, well, you get rid of a squared by square rooting, right? The problem is when I do that, if I say my right side is 5 and my left side is x, do you agree I only found one of the two answers? So they're kind of building this knowledge up so that when we hit you with this in a little while. So what they say is if you ever do the square root of a variable squared, you have to put in absolute value signs, which is kind of where they're building towards. Because now, what number could go in here for x? x could be a 5, right? Because absolute value of 5 gives you 5. Or you could take and put a negative 5 in there because the absolute value of negative 5 gives you so we're kind of working towards that. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. You can totally forget it. We'll hit it later. Ready to move on to irrational? It's totally forget it, so learn it again. Irrational numbers. Um, irrational numbers have decimals that. Anyone remember from earlier? Don't. Talked about it briefly when we talked about the rational numbers. So rational numbers were numbers that could be written as a fraction. And decimals that stop and decimals that repeat, you could write as fractions. So irrational numbers are going to have decimals that don't stop or repeat. So like pi. Like pi, exactly. Which we're not um, using yep. So I'm going to quick say right here. So the stop, technically it's terminate, is the math word for it. So I probably should have wrote that there. but. I at least kind of have it there. Um, okay, so rational numbers have no decimals. So this is going back to the other kind. So rational, the old ones we were doing, have no decimals or decimals that stop or repeat. So irrational then have decimals that don't stop or don't repeat. We could, I, th I threw right in here, what Sam said earlier, pi, because pi, as far as they know, that keeps going. They haven't found a pattern to it. Um, but some other square roots, like square root of 2, gives you this weird gobbledygook of numbers. You don't see a pattern if you punch that in. Not all square roots, because square root of 25 is 5. We just did that one. But square root of weird numbers, square root of 3, probably square root of 7, things like that. Okay. And the last thing, so do you agree every number you've used so far is either going to be real, oh, I'm sorry, every number you've used so far is either rational, could be written as a fraction, so no decimal or decimals that stop or repeat, or irrational, the thing we just wrote, decimals that don't stop or repeat. That if you take those two together, those are all the numbers you've ever used, and those two together make up real numbers. So real numbers, all... The numbers so you've used so far. And it includes both rational, so numbers without a decimal, and decimals that stop or repeat, and irrational. Do you want to know the really fun part? A few years, you'll start doing imaginary numbers. Take real numbers, all the numbers that you've done. We just said square roots have to have what kind of number inside? Positive. Positive. So your next step in these like different types of numbers is you'll start doing things like square root of negative 9, which is impossible, right? There's no real number that that number times itself would give you negative 9, which is why it has to equal 3i, an imaginary number. Which is just cool, but they also actually have practical applications, like um, studying Kirchhoff's laws for like complex electrical circuits, you get into imaginary numbers. Or if you're doing acoustics, like studying sound and designing rooms for like auditoriums, you use imaginary numbers. So, but I digress. So.